Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, is a lifelong developmental condition that can pose social, communication, and behavioral challenges. It is a grouping that replaces many other conditions that used to be diagnosed separately, including Autistic Disorder and Asperger's Syndrome. It affects the way in which an individual perceives the world around them. Often, there are no physical signs that someone is living with ASD, but the way in which these individuals communicate and interact with their peers will be different from most others. Since this is a spectrum disorder, every child is uniquely impacted by the symptoms. In other words, some people are slightly impaired, while others experience more severe symptoms. As of April 2017, the World Health Organization estimates that one in every 160 children are living with ASD around the world. Based on epidemiological studies from the past 50 years, it, the prevalence of ASD is known to be rising globally. Most people have a general awareness about autism, however it is often limited in scope. Hi, my name is Dikhil and today we will be talking about the causes, symptoms, diagnostic practices and treatment and therapy options related to ASD. The main cause of ASD is still unknown, but a lot of research is being done globally to determine what it might be. Some factors to consider include genetics, brain growth, the environment, and other body systems. It is likely that these factors do not work in isolation, but rather come together to increase the chances of an individual developing ASD. While the exact cause is not known, scientists are aware of many risk factors to consider. Genes may be one of the most important factors to consider as individuals with ASD often have a predisposition to other chromosomal conditions as well. What's more, those who have a sibling living with ASD are at a significantly higher chance of developing ASD themselves. And while it occurs in all ethnic, socioeconomic, and racial groups, males are significantly more likely than females to have ASD. It is also important to note that some of these so-called risk factors are not true. For instance, there is no scientific evidence that vaccines cause ASD within published studies, government websites, or any claims made by the World Health Organization. Similarly, there is no accuracy to claims that ASD is contagious. Before we proceed, it's important to note that different individuals experience different symptoms to different intensities, as this is a spectrum disorder. With this in mind, let's watch the experience of Carly, a 17-year-old girl with non-verbal autism at a coffee shop. Hmm, I can't wait for a coffee. Oh, hello, barista. What do you girls want? Um, skim soy latte. <laughs> Taryn, soy can't be skim. Hot chocolate, orange juice. No, Dad, I want a coffee. Hot chocolate? Great. So, I was thinking of going to Sarah's later. Could you give me a ride? Yeah, sure. Are you cool with taking your sister? Yeah. Wait, what? I have my own plan. Carly. Okay, I'll see you tonight, okay? Focus. Is to be aware of symptoms that those living with ASD might experience. Those with ASD might have issues with sensory processing, either by being overstimulated or understimulated. What Carly was experiencing is likely overstimulation of sensory inputs. Other signs include repetitive behaviors. For example, a person with ASD might repeat a phrase or a word multiple times and can even repeat daily rituals, such as eating the same breakfast every morning. They can get upset by the slightest change in their routine, or when placed in a new environment. As previously mentioned, ASD affects social abilities. Specifically, understanding other people's actions might be a little bit problematic for those with ASD. They might not make as much eye contact or listen to other people as often. They might also be slow at responding to those trying to get their attention. On the other hand, some people living with ASD might spend a lot of time talking about their interests and not realize that other people are not engaged or paying attention. These are just a few of the typical ASD symptoms, however, and there are abundance of signs given the range of possibilities and their severities. 
HD can be detected by 18 months or younger. According to some studies, an experienced professional can reliably diagnose a child by the age of 2. However, most children don't receive a final diagnosis until they're much older. There are no medical tests to identify ASD, which makes it hard to diagnose. Instead, doctors look at the child's behavior and development. ASD is diagnosed based on the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM-5. Individuals suspected to have ASD are evaluated on specific behaviors and their overall development. This can include their mental abilities, interpersonal relationship, repetition in actions, and verbal skills. This is the first part of the diagnosis, the screening process. The next stage is a comprehensive evaluation. Doctors will interview parents by asking questions regarding their child's development, observing their child, and conducting things like genetic tests, neurological testing, and more as necessary. Often, there is testing done to rule out other possibilities as well. For instance, a child's lack of responsiveness might stem from hearing issues. It is likely that a team of health professionals will work together to complete this assessment. There are no medications that can cure ASD, but there are ways to help people with ASD function better. For example, medication can help people manage certain symptoms, such as high energy levels or an inability to focus. Applied Behavior Analysis, or ABA, is a notable treatment approach that is becoming well accepted. This encourages positive behaviors while decouraging negative behaviors. There are different types of ABA and it can form one or more components of a treatment. Research has shown that early intervention treatment, which can help from ages of birth to approximately three years of age, can help greatly improve a child's development and ability and help them learn important skills. This video provides just a brief overview of the subject. But it's important, therefore, it's important to talk to your child's doctor if you think your child might have ASD or any other developmental condition. Remember, those with ASD deserve the same rights as us. Unfortunately, there are some people that do discriminate against them, which is totally wrong. For more information, visit the ASD pages on the Center for Disease Control website, Health Canada, or the National Institute of Mental Health, or even the World Health Organization. Thanks for watching, and for more videos like this, please subscribe to the McMaster Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel.